I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith, and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Good evening and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some of your evening with us. Really happy tonight to introduce Ray Van Epperen. Appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. Thank you, glad to and, be here. And we hadn't talked about this earlier, but I understand you were born in New York. I am born and raised on what we used to call Long Island. Long yeah. Island. <laughs> yes. Uh, and what? how old were you when you came out here? Um, actually, it was only about 10 years ago. Oh, really? So I left New York at 19, uh, in the Air, joined the Air Force, and yeah. moved to the Carolinas, and then lived in Texas for a little while, and I've been here about 10 years. Okay. So. Well, uh, interestingly enough, you were actually a convert to the church, is that right? Tell yes. us about that a little bit. Yeah, so <clears throat> I had, uh, it was kind of one of these sort of low spots in life, you know, and <laughs> Had, uh, had trouble finding a, another job, and, and I mo was going to move into a trailer, you know, in North Carolina. They have a lot of these trailer parks, and yeah. so I was just moving into one of those, and I, I met another man who was kind of at a turning point in his life. We just started talking, and, and we kind of agreed that maybe what's missing from our life is is having a spiritual life. He said, well, I have this friend that, that you know, we should talk to. He he's, has this amazing family life, and his church life is amazing and all this stuff, and, and I don't know much about it, but maybe we should just have him come by. Tell us it about it. It turns out he was a return missionary. Oh, okay. And my friend didn't know this either, right? Oh. And so uh, the night that he was supposed to come visit with us, uh, my other friend just called. Is like, I can't make it. I have to work late. He chickened out. Yeah, okay. So I met with this, this return, return missionary. missionary. We kind of went through the whole three questions thing, you know, where did you come from, why are you here, and all that. And I, I thought it very interesting. And some of the questions I asked, he had... He had answers he ready, had and answers, I was pretty yeah. impressed with that. And yeah. nice, truly nice young guy. Yeah. He was from, uh, you know, I was uh, from New York. He was from Wyoming, I believe, you know, kind yeah. of a cowboy and yeah. nothing else in common. But it, it, we just kind of hit it off. Um, but, but very quickly just sort of bought into the whole thing. And I had that moment where I actually prayed. And I did it in my closet because I thought that was supposed to be literal. Oh, my so goodness. So I went into my closet, <laughs> this little <laughs> closet in this trailer, and, and prayed about the Book of Mormon and got this overwhelming feeling. And so that just told me, well, it's got to be true. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the rest is history, so to speak. From yeah, there, I ended up joining it. the church, got baptized. and Got baptized. Yeah. And, and uh, were you married at the time? You were 23, I believe. Right. But not married at the time. Okay. No. I was on my own. Wow. And did, was there any anything unusual that came to your attention during the process of converting? Or did it all seem very normal? And You know, most of it, because um, I didn't really have a lot of... Uh, of, of a background to compare that to. Yeah, I wondered if you had a biblical... Yeah, I, I mean, I was raised, um, you know, I wouldn't say my parents were spiritual people, my mother probably more than my dad, but they did take me to church. Yeah. Um, and so I did have some, you know, I understood a little bit about church life, but I didn't really know scripture. I didn't really know the details of the gospel. Yeah. So I didn't have a lot to compare to, and this everything just sort of sounded so amazing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I didn't question as I should, but it just felt you good and the, it yeah. seemed to make good sense. good feeling yeah. in your bosom and, and it was about Jesus, certainly, right. and, and so you go, you be, you're very active and you stay active? I was. Um, I didn't stay active the whole time. It was oh. kind of interesting. So at first I was what they called on fire. 
I mean, I would go out with the missionaries. I would help, you know, do anything I could. I'd accept any calling, do anything I could do to serve. Um, And all that was going well. What happened, though, was that I was looking around at these people that I was now associating with. And and understand, without going into detail, I came really from out of the world into (laughs) this environment, right? So it was a big change for me. And I was looking at these new people that I'm, I'm associating with. And I had this feeling like I will never be as good as these people. And they're doing it without even trying. I'm trying my heart out, and I just I don't feel like I can live up to that standard. And that, if that is if that wasn't enough, I you know as I began to learn more and more about God's standards, oh. you know, and all these commandments I'm supposed to follow, I just felt like I can't do this. I, I'll never make it. Um, so I sort of let myself um, talk myself out of going any further. However, I didn't stop believing. Okay. I just stopped going, and I, I was inactive for a number of years. But I, I never stopped believing. I never told anyone that I didn't believe it anymore because I did. But you just didn't go to church? I just or? didn't go to church anymore okay. for, for a number of years. And then I, I finally said, you know, I'm still not happy. <laughs> <laughs> Something's still missing, so maybe I need to go back to church. Give it a try again. And that's the time when I met my wife. Um, we dated, and I told her that, you know, the first date, I said, hey, so if, you're, if we're going to go she any further LDS? with this. She was not LDS. Oh, she wasn't. Okay. Um, but I was like, if we're going to have any kind of relationship here, then I need you to at least investigate this church because I'm trying to go back, sort of reestablish myself there. And, you know, I don't want to start this relationship and then find out that you want nothing to do with that and then okay. we're kind of in this situation. So the, the um, coincidental thing was that she had already had the missionaries stop by a couple of times. She had some good friends that were members. So she was very open to the idea. Oh, wow. So she ended up joining. We got married. And a f- few years later, we went through the temple together and everything else. Wow. And to this day, she's still a faithful Mormon. Okay. So Interesting. So... Uh so then you eventually move out here, and you're yeah. active out here, I guess. Yes. And, yeah. So yeah. what, uh, you're just busy in church, and life, <coughs> life's going on, what, what happens next? Yeah, I mean, it was all pretty much the, the, the usual stuff, you yeah. know, callings and just trying to, to live right and raise my kids the right way and, and do all that stuff. It was fairly uneventful, in fact. I always tell people when they ask about, well, what started the change? The, the, for me, the, the thing that I can't quite nail down is, is what happened that would even cause me to start thinking different or start looking at anything, because there really wasn't anything. I was very happy, very content. Hmm. Um, so I was working in high priest groups, leadership positions, teaching uh, gospel principles, I was singing in the choir. I, I got to sing at the, uh, um, the dedication of the Okra Mountain Temple. Wow. I was right behind President Monson, you know, <laughs> arms, you know, reach away. Things like that, and everything was going along fine. It was I had really no reason to question anything or to be unhappy or content, yeah. or or, or uh, not content. Before you it. go any further, let me bend forward here. I think we've lost that just a little bit. Okay. Okay. There we go. That's better. All right. Sorry about that. So things are going along fine. You. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, <coughs> so I really can't pinpoint a, a particular um, thing that happened that started everything. Um, but I just sort of found myself feeling like um, there were these things out there that I'd heard before that never paid attention to, never really bothered me. But I felt that I, I should at least understand them. Hmm. Uh, maybe my, someday one of my kids will ask a Anything question. Anything specific? Uh, um, well, it was some of the, actually initially, um, it was some of the things that I'd heard. We had visited the Hill Kimura pageant and the, the one down in um, Manti, Manti yeah. and so on. And you have, have all those people out there yelling at you and saying all this stuff. And I was like, well, they, it must be all lies. Sure. Um, but I'd heard a comment by a couple people that were a little bit more pragmatic about things, saying, well, you know, not all of it's lies. The question is what that stuff means. You know, some of it, <laughs> you know, may have some truth to it. And so I just felt like, well, maybe I should try to understand these things yeah. with well, no expectation that I was going to, that it was going to affect my testimony sure. of the church, no expectation that I would ever leave, yeah. but that it would strengthen my testimony because I'd have answers for those things. And you'd know exactly how to defend the church and exactly. be aware of the doctrine. And right. So, sure. Um, I mean, you know, what... One of the things that I, I found when starting to read the Old Testament is all these people that I thought were my heroes, you know, Abraham and all these people, when you look and see, well, they really, a lot of them did a lot of bad things too. Yeah. That didn't mean that they weren't prophets, didn't mean that they weren't people of God. Yeah. And so Joseph Smith could have done some things that were even despicable. It wouldn't change the fact 
that maybe he was a, a prophet. Still called as a so prophet. So I was willing to just simply, you know, look at these things. Hmm. Um, and and so the, the, the mentality was that, um, I mentioned this earlier, that uh, I didn't do what I felt like I should have done at the beginning, which was be a real investigator of the church. Know oh, about you were it. an investigator during your missionary lessons, <laughs> right? But you, as soon as you joined, you quit I being an investigator. I stopped investigating, and I just started following, right? Oh boy! And so I think I was just open to investigating and just knowing what what is the history, what are these things that really about that I'd heard of, and the first thing that um, that I became conscious of is that everything I was reading or researching was um, was official church documents. Right, okay. journal discourses, some of the yeah. things that are in the vault, you know, that right. have kind of been, come out over, over the last so many years, yeah. and and so none of this was anti-Mormon stuff. None of this was slander from outside sources. There, yeah. Some of that is there, sure, but I ignored that stuff. Yeah, I just looked at church at stuff. That. Yeah, right. And as I started looking at this, um, that's really where the doubts and the questions started to come. So it had the opposite effect. Instead of strengthening me. And answering these questions has just started making me want to ask more questions. Yeah. That's when I started hearing about the Book of Abraham and the Kinderhook plates and on and on and on. <laughs> and so I'd research each of these things thinking, oh, I'm going to find something this that proves that these answer. people are yeah. just trying to destroy the church. Right. And the more I dug, the more I found that these things are true. The question in my mind still was, well, but what do I do about that? I know. Right? Yeah. It's like, maybe there are some problems, but that doesn't Still necessarily, doesn't. Like, do yeah. I walk away from what the only thing I knew to be God in spiritual life exactly. because there were some issues on the human level. Yeah. And this is where everything changed. I remember standing um, at one of the track stations towards downtown. I was working downtown at the time. And I just started uh, praying. And I was like, you know, Lord, I need to know what to do. I need some answers. I is the church true? And, you know, and I, I, I it, not the emotional type feeling, but I kind of, I felt like I got an answer, which, which is that, no, that's, that's not true. Was Joseph Smith a prophet? I was not getting any real confirmation he was a prophet. Then I got to the question of, you know, should I leave the church? And the answer was no. I felt mm. like the answer was no. Not yet. <clears throat> and I'll tell you why. No, not yet. <laughs> if we got every single person who was a member of the church to leave it today, what is the percentage that would ever have any spiritual life again? Yeah. It's not a question of getting people to understand that Mormonism has a problem and leave it. What we want to do is, is help people to become Christians, that's help people exactly to find the truth. what we're trying to do with And that's this what show, he wanted yeah. me to know, oh, is wow. don't just leave Mormonism and then you're out on the street yeah. and have nothing. Yeah. The next thing I got was read. So from that day forward, I picked up the New Testament, I picked up the Bible and started reading the New Testament, got through the Gospels. These are things that I'd read hundreds of times before, at least in bits and pieces. Yeah. And everything just took on a new meaning. It, it was like my eyes were open. Your eyes you were know? open. That same yeah. thing happened to me. It just, all of a sudden, they're, th they're there and you'd never really read them before. Right. Yeah. And the doctrines of grace, when I got to Romans, um, it, it was kind of a funny story. When I first got to Romans, he talks quite a bit about the law. Yeah. And I started, I actually called someone and said, what's this about? I thought it was all grace, but here he's talking about law. He said, just keep reading. <laughs> and I got to chapter six and so on, and all of a sudden he turns it around. So this whole doctrine of grace and everything, I'd heard this so many times before, never well, yeah, understood it. Saved by grace after all we can do. Well, even, even outside of Mormonism, I'd heard Christians talk about salvation oh, through grace. Okay. I didn't quite understand it. Yeah. But now all of a sudden, it, it just made sense. And I knew that this was really what my relationship to God was. That He, um, you know, it was a whole different picture of who He was. Yeah. And so on. And so that's what really made the change. It wasn't finding out there are issues with Mormonism. It's finding out that there's another truth out there. And, and it seems maybe harsh to some people that believe in Mormonism to say, it's not the same God, because yeah. it's not. It's not the same Jesus. It's different. Well, you, know? you made a little quote that I just loved. That you said something about Jesus that I knew about him, but what? But I didn't know him. Yeah. You know, I knew if, about him, right. but I didn't know him. If you ask me about my relationship with Jesus Christ um, as a Mormon, I, I, my answer would have been fairly short, right? Yeah. I wouldn't say I didn't have a relationship, but the relationship was like, I, I'm thankful for him. He did a great thing, and yeah. you know, he was a great example for us, and I right. want to shake his hand one day and, and thank, uh, him. thank him for what he did. Yeah. I mean, he's my elder brother, and look what he did for me. Yeah. 
Um, today, if I, if I were to envision meeting Jesus Christ, I wouldn't envision going up and shaking his hand. <laughs> I'd envision falling on my face on the floor yeah. because I'm in, the, I'm in the presence of God, you know. Yeah. And so it's a whole, it's a different relationship. It's a much more fulfilling and personal relationship. Yeah. So I, yeah, I knew about him. I could answer lots of questions about his life and, and things he taught, but I, wouldn't, I couldn't say I knew him. And you also mentioned uh, kind of an interesting thing about progressing, Jesus progressing. We knew that he had to come to earth, right, to get right. a body, to be baptized, and to go through, I guess, what he had accepted in heaven was his role on the cross and get Garden of Gethsemane. But explain that, or continue on with that thought. So. Yeah, so, you know, according to Mormon doctrine, um, even, even the Father, has gone through a progression yeah. and became exalted, right? Yeah. Well, Jesus would have had to do the same thing. And sure. if he's our brother, um, he would have gone through essentially the same thing that we did. The idea that maybe he was selected as the Savior, right, that does make him in a little different category than me, perhaps. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> but he still has to learn. One of the things we were taught was, well, you have to get a body because you don't know what salt tastes like. You can't explain it. In other words, Jesus had to come here because he didn't know this stuff. <laughs> he's still learning, right? Now maybe he is way, way beyond where I am, but he's still learning and still growing. And that would be, the, that would be true of even the Father, according to Mormon doctrine, right. strictly speaking. But what I understand now is that this, this Savior of mine <laughs> is in fact the same God. He is one with the Father. The Creator God. <laughs> right. He has always been here. He will always be here. He's not learning anything new. Yeah. And, and he condescended to come down to save to come. me and you. Yeah. He didn't need to. He did it because he loves me. And a free gift. Yeah. And Mormonism, at least the way I interpreted the teaching, was that we're trying to meet some standard so that we might somehow satisfy God. Yeah. And it was a little hard at first to say, well, I can't do that. That's what I felt years back when I went in that. <laughs> it's like, I can't do that. Yeah. I, I feel that way today, but this doesn't make me want to leave the church. It makes me want to run to my Savior even more. Yeah. It's accepting the fact that I'm very broken. Yeah. Um, I'm sinful in my heart, in my mind, and all this stuff. Um, and it's not that it doesn't matter, but I don't, I don't have to worry about those things. I can be at peace because I know that I don't have to meet that standard. Yeah. I never will. That's why Christ died for me, and that His grace was sufficient to take care of all of that. Well, one thing we talk about too is that Christians or Mormons misunderstand that gift of grace, and now we can go do anything we want. How would you respond to that? Yeah, that's one of the most frequent questions I get yeah. is this whole idea of, well, yeah, so you can just say, hey, I'm saved, and then you can go do whatever you want. Well, I think technically the answer would be that's true. Yeah. Right? Once saved, always saved. I, yeah. I do believe that. The, the thing, though, is there's two reasons why we don't. Number one is because God actually changes us, right? He gives us that new heart. heart he puts yeah. the Spirit in us, and we, don't, we no longer want to sin. We're born again. We still will spirit. because we still are in the flesh, and we still have these weaknesses and things. But we don't want to anymore, so yeah. the amount of sin will decrease. The other question is this idea of works. It's not just sinning. It's like, well, why would you even do all those works if they don't save you? Um, and the reason is because... Um, I now recognize it's not my works, right? It's God's working through me. Yeah. That I'm, I'm just a, 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 a vessel that he uses to accomplish his good works. And so I, I've had this discussion about a faith without works being dead. And it, it took a while for me to be able to actually answer that question yeah. intelligently. And I think I've kind of got it now. It says faith with, without works is dead, and I agree with that. But that doesn't say that the works save us. No. Just that if you have one, you have the other. And I use this analogy of smoke and fire. If you see smoke, there is likely a fire. But smoke <laughs> isn't the fire. That's true. It's seeing the smoke that is proof that there is a fire. Yeah. Just like our works are proof that, that we are saved and that God has changed us. And he's, he's accomplishing these works through us. That's a great analogy. So couple that with this new desire, this new heart, wanting to please God and wanting yeah. to accomplish good things. And, and so, yes, we, we will do those good things, yeah. even though we don't have to <laughs> That's right. because we're already saved. Yeah. So the Bible means a little bit differently then, as you've kind of said? A lot differently. Um, yeah, so um, the, the biggest thing for me probably was the Old Testament. I really didn't like the Old Testament much <laughs> in the past. As a Mormon. <laughs> it was hard to read, and I, I didn't really understand it. 
Um, and it's taken a while for me to really understand that the Old Testament is really the gospel. I mean, that's where he teaches the gospel. That's where he reveals himself. The New Testament, which I still love, and it's, it's yeah. a beautiful thing to read, is really a fulfillment of all that prophecy all and all that, that law. Isn't that it's Christ saying, all that stuff I've been teaching you, here it is. Here it is. The work is done, yeah. right? It's finished. And all that shed blood in the temple and all that temple work that they did in the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I kind of, I get that. You know, there's still some questions here and there. Sure. I occasionally go to my pastor and it's like, well, what's, what's that about, you know? Yeah. And, and he, he usually can help me through that. But for the most part, I get it. We're dealing with, um, you know, this is one of those dynamics that, that is so clear to me now. Um, there's a fellow that, <clears throat> he's, a, he's a, a missionary slash pastor in, in uh, Africa. Hmm. And I've met him a few times. And one of the people that he works with made this quote. I, I don't know if it's someone else's, but this is how I heard it. And um, she said to someone when he was trying to t explain some different doctrine than what Christianity teaches, she said, now your problem is that your God is too small. And I just love that because I think that's where I was as a Mormon. It wasn't just that my do the doctrine was wrong or there were some problems. He was too small. Wow. God is this great, amazing being. There is such a, 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 <laughs> a, you know, a, a gap between where he is and where we where are. We're He's not just someone like us who's farther Who down the path. Who used to be a man. Right. And, yeah. and, and so it, it started, when I started reading the Old Testament, starting to understand who he is, little things start popping out. Um, one of them that I, I kind of recently got was, God doesn't do good as much as he is good. It's not like us where we have to make a decision. Will I do the right thing? Will I choose the right? Yeah. I don't have to, God doesn't have to choose the right. He is right. Yeah. He is goodness. He is justice. He is mercy. In, right. Yeah. And that those char those characteristics are eternal. Wow. And and just you know and so when I start reading about the the, the blood sacrifices and all that, it, some of it seems a little extreme, a little harsh, perhaps, but not when you recognize who this God is, yeah. right? Um, and uh, the, these little things like the who was the the one that touched the ark when they were walking with it, yeah, and he and died, started I can't falling think of or something. Yeah. I don't and he touched the ark, he's like, why would he kill him? He said, you don't understand, I, I don't compromise the law. <laughs> the law is don't touch the ark. Yeah. Except unless you're the high priest and it's <laughs> on that holy day. You touch the ark. We think that's horrible, but the reality is he could have killed all of us every day. That's what the law is. Right, yeah. but he doesn't. He, his, he's merciful <laughs> almost all the time. Occasionally he shows his justice so yeah. that we don't forget yeah. that the law is important. Well, Ray, I know we're actually running out of time already. Okay. Um, I know you have a heart for the Mormons. Uh, do you hate Mormons? No. <laughs> no, my wife is a Mormon, and I don't hate her. Oh. Um, I, um, I like to tell people that if you ever think anything uh, that I say or think is, is anti-Mormon, what you're saying is that I don't like my wife, a lot of my friends, some of the best people that I know. Yeah. Um, I'm not anti-Mormon. I simply don't believe that doctrine, and I understand some of the history that that is not what they teach. Um, but I'm not. And that uh, they've added another gospel, really, haven't they? They, they have. They've yeah. added a lot of things, and they've changed some fundamental yeah. things. And so I, I, you know, I love the Mormon people. And my heart goes out for them because I know what it's like to look at someone like where I am now and and think that I'm the one that's in error, and they and they don't see the problems. Um, and I just want to reach out to them. And they're not willing to really look. Sometimes right. that's a problem. But you've started a ministry, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it literally is just starting. Okay. Um, but it's called After LDS. So there's a website called AfterLDS.org or .com. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot of sites out there, and I could name a few, but there's a lot of sites out there that do a great job of showing the problems with Mormonism, um, proving some things erroneous based on biblical, you know, uh, standards and these types of things. And I, I didn't want to just re, you know, just do all that again. Yeah. This ministry is specifically going out, reaching out to people who already have some questions. I'm not out there to destroy the faithful Mormon's testimony. Find the people that already have some questions or some doubts, or maybe they've already pretty much left. But the idea is that, you know, I think the statistics are that roughly 80% of, of uh, Mormons that leave do not go to another church become atheist, agnostic, or just don't practice. Well, the relationship has been built with the church rather right. than with Jesus or God. So when they lose that, they basically lose everything. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is reach out to those people and say, don't give up on God. 
just because there were issues with Mormonism. Let us help you, give you just like Jesus wants to be our, our friend and he wants to take our hand and lead us. Yeah. Let us be his hands. Let us help you through this transition. So we're not there to trash Mormonism or to show you all the problems with it. Well, there's, there's some mention of those things. Yeah. The focus on you know, trying to bring people to Jesus Christ. Talk about the and good news of exactly. in the Bible and try to... Right. Because so the Bible was here first. I mean, it's been for here thousands for of thousands years, of yeah. years. And yeah. yeah. So there's the only page that I really dedicate to comparing Mormonism to Christianity is about the core gospel. What is the gospel that Mormonism teaches, which is a gospel of works and, and all this, and how does that compare to the gospel of grace? Beside that, I sort of leave the rest of it alone and really just invite people to come to Christ. Wow. So. Well, I wish you the best with that. Thank you. It is disappointing, though. Do you find people or what do you think it is that, that keeps people from really investigating? As you said, being continuing to be an investigator. Yeah, I think there's a few things. You know, one, they're taught not to, right? They're taught, don't look at anything outside of the church. And they, they think that a lot of this stuff is, are sources outside the church. So they, they're trying to follow what they're told and not, not do that. I think another thing is that people are afraid. Be, they may not recognize it, but I think they're afraid to give up what is essentially their whole life. It's their culture, their, cult, yeah, their the, family, their jobs, their communities. Everything is centered around the church, especially here in Utah. Well, it hasn't been easy for you either, has no, it? No, and, and for me it's been easier than some because my family isn't right here and I'm, I don't come from a long line of Mormons. So, um, so it's been a little bit easier, but some people would be leaving basically everything that they know. Yeah. And that's hard, and that's why I want to help reach out through this ministry to, to kind of give them that helping hand, yeah. give them another family and another support group to kind of move into. Um, I think another thing is that because of the sort of absolute perspective of, of Mormonism in the sense that we have a prophet and everything we say is true, um, <laughs> it's hard for them to have an honest discussion because if they give up one, if they concede one point, then they're essentially saying, well, then the whole thing can't be true. Everything possibly could collapse. Exactly, and I, and I think that keeps them Even from opening their Even all the strange doctrines and the things that were added and the things that yeah. Joseph Smith said or Brigham Young said, right. once you start admitting to, admitting to some of those right. things, then everything falls yeah. apart. And then the last thing real quick is that so much has changed over time. So that what they say, this is what I believe. It's like, but that's not what the church yeah, teaches. It it's changes. just now they don't talk about that anymore. Now this is what we believe. Right. Ray, thank you so much. You're just excellent. I appreciate you. Very articulate, and I appreciate you sharing your story. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks, and we appreciate you watching. And remember, you're following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Good night.